At ESMO 2023, we saw three really large studies in advanced and recurrent endometrial cancer that were super exciting. The first was the ATTEND study, which was exploring the addition of atezolizumab to chemotherapy in advanced or recurrent disease. The second was the DUOE study, which explored the addition of dervalumab as well as alaparib to chemotherapy for patients with recurrent endometrial cancer. And then finally, we saw updated data from GY018 looking at response and um, factors for benefit of pembrolizumab in addition to chemotherapy for recurrent endometrial cancer. At ESMO 2023, we were able to see the presentation of the ATTEND study. Now, this was a study of atezolizumab, which is a PDL1 inhibitor, added to chemotherapy in endometrial cancer. So they enrolled advanced or newly recurrent endometrial cancer and randomized patients to either chemotherapy, standard of care paclitaxel and carboplatin, with or without atezolizumab at the time of chemotherapy, followed by atezolizumab maintenance and the primary endpoint was progression-free survival. So they were able to randomize 551 patients to the um, control and interventional arms. And what they saw was they met their primary endpoint. So we saw an improvement in progression-free survival in all comers with a hazard ratio of 0.74. But importantly, they looked at a subset analysis that's incredibly relevant, and that is the um, expression of mismatch repair protein. And in the mismatch repair deficient group, we saw the biggest impact of the addition of atezolizumab with a hazard ratio of 0.36. And that's as expected because they had the biomarker. When they did a, a, a planned exploratory but non-analytic analysis of mismatch repair proficient, we did not see as much benefit with the atezolizumab. The hazard ratio was only about 0.8. So that's consistent with what we've seen with other data and really helps us hammer home the point that patients with mismatch repair deficient advanced and recurrent endometrial cancer should be treated with an um, immune checkpoint inhibitor in addition to their chemotherapy. During ESMO 2023, we also saw a presentation of DUOE by myself. Um, now, this was a randomized phase three study that sought to explore if the addition of dervalumab to chemotherapy followed by dervalumab maintenance, improved outcomes. But it also had an, a second primary objective of seeing if the addition of alaparib to the dervalumab maintenance piece would improve outcomes as well. And this is in advanced or recurrent endometrial cancer. So it had a three-arm design, and we had one arm that was the control arm, which is paclitaxel and carboplatin and no maintenance. The second arm added dervalumab to the paclitaxel and carboplatin, followed by dervalumab maintenance. And then the third arm added pac the dervalumab to paclitaxel carboplatin, followed by dervalumab and olaparib maintenance. So 714 patients were randomized, and the primary endpoint was progression-free survival. And it was a dual endpoint. We looked at the comparison of derva versus control, as well as derva olaparib versus control. And what we found was that DOE met both of its primary endpoints. So we saw an improvement in progression-free survival for the DERVA alone arm, about a hazard ratio of 0.71, so not, not too shabby, especially considering that this population was predominantly made up of mismatch repair proficient tumors, where we wouldn't expect as much immunotherapy benefit. But importantly, the addition of a laparib really drove increased benefit. And we saw a hazard ratio of 0.55, so a 45% reduction in the risk of progression when we added a laparib to dervalumab in the entire intent to treat population. Now, when we teased out by biomarker, we saw some really intriguing data. The mismatch repair deficient group, which was about 20% of the group, we didn't see too much added benefit from olaparib. The, the hazard ratios were each about 0.4. So whether you gave just derva or derva olaparib, it was the same. So really clinically, not too clear that olaparib will provide benefit in that particular subgroup. 
However, for the Mismatch Repair Proficient Group, which is the bulk of our patients, that's where the Elaparib really provided the benefit, reducing that hazard ratio down to 0.57 in that specific group. And that's a group with poor prognosis. So this is really where the Duo E study shined and where we think that practice is going to be changed and that we'll be able to soon be giving Dervalumab and Elaparib to this patient population. As expected, when we add additional drugs to a patient's regimen, we do see additional toxicity. But the good news for Duo E was there wasn't anything unexpected. They were as expected for the individual agents. So we did see an increase in grade three adverse events in the Derva Elaparib arm as compared to control but it was really driven by grade three anemia and grade three neutropenia, which are expected and very well known adverse events for the elaborate. And so those could generally be um, modified with dose interruptions and dose delays. And the discontinuation rate stayed fairly similar between all three arms. At ESMO 2023, we also saw updated data from the GY018 study. And just as a reminder to our listeners, this was a study that randomized patients with advanced or recurrent endometrial cancer to either chemotherapy with or without pembrolizumab, followed by pembrolizumab maintenance. And we've already seen that that regimen improved progression-free survival both in mismatch repair deficient and mismatch repair proficient disease. So what we saw at this ESMO 2023 was an update around response. So they looked at patients with measurable disease to see if response was improved with the combination. And the bottom line is, yes, it is. Now, when they broke that out by the biomarkers, we saw a stronger improvement in response, objective response, in patients with mismatch repair deficient disease, approaching 80%, over 70% in chemo alone. However, on the mismatch repair proficient side, we did also see an increase. But interestingly, the baseline response to therapy, the baseline response to chemotherapy was only about 50% in that group and improved to 70%. So really nice data to say that with the addition of immunotherapy in either biomarker subgroup, you can see objective response, and that will hopefully get you to your maintenance strategy, which is important. The other interesting thing that they, that they updated on this particular ESMO 2023 was looking at the um, reason for mismatch repair. So looking at if this was a Lynch syndrome some, uh, mismatch repair deficiency or if it was driven by methylation. And there's been a sense in some other studies that if you have mismatch repair deficiency from methylation, you don't get as much benefit from immunotherapy. But that was not borne out in the GY018 data. They saw similar levels of activity in both um, the, the Pembro addition to chemotherapy, regardless of the way in which the patient developed mismatch repair deficiency. So that's really exciting that we don't have to parse that out. Anybody with mismatch repair deficiency should get a checkpoint inhibitor with their chemotherapy. Mm -hmm.